So you're always looking for shortcuts, huh? I can't believe you're saving the same dishes as last year. I don't need a disgraceful daughter-in-law like you. Understood? Well then, I'll leave. Huh? After that, I received a bunch of calls from my husband. But please help me, Rose. Something terrible has happened at my parents' house. Rose, I'm begging you. My name is Rose, and I am 38 years old. I've been married to my husband Tom for five years. We first met in college, where he was my senior. We got to know each other through the same club, but we didn't date or anything at that time. Then, we reunion at a club annual reunion after becoming working professionals. Talking to Tom after such a long time was enjoyable, and that's what led us to start meeting each other. After a few dates, we officially began dating, and things went smoothly. After about three years of dating, he proposed to me. Feeling ready for marriage, I immediately accepted his proposal, and that's how we decided to get married. We promptly went to both sets of parents to announce our marriage and completed the formalities of meeting each other's families. We had a successful wedding ceremony and embarked on our marriage life happily. I worked hard to cook delicious meals for my husband. This is really good. Really? I'm glad to hear that. I'm a lucky guy to have a wife who's good at cooking. I was happy to receive compliments from my husband. However, a few months into our married life, I started feeling dissatisfied with my husband. The main reason was that he didn't help with any household chores. He said he had never cooked before, so I understood that aspect. But I still wanted him to contribute by doing cleaning and laundry. I'm not a full-time housewife. I work as a regular employee, just like my husband. So it's simply unfair that I shoulder the entire burden of household chores. Hey, Tom, could you help me a bit too? Uh, later. During weekends, when I was doing laundry and cleaning, I would ask my husband for help. But he would just give me vague answers. In the end, he wouldn't lend a hand and instead play games or watch TV. At first, I enjoyed the excitement of being married, but gradually, I became frustrated with being the one burdened with all the responsibilities. However, I believed that married life required compromise, and not everything would go my way. I thought it was something I could work on. Of course, I didn't immediately conclude that divorce was the answer. I'm sure there are aspects where my husband finds me unpleasant as well. Blaming the other person entirely didn't seem right. So I said to my husband, "Please tell me openly about my shortcomings. I'll do my best too." Huh? Yeah. Okay. My husband's response seemed nonchalant, but I was careful not to outright dismiss him. However, there were still things that I couldn't accept. It had to do with the presence of my mother-in-law. It seemed like my mother-in-law didn't like me. From the first time I visited my in-law's house after getting married, I was met with cold attitudes. I don't approve of you. You're trying to deceive Tom. You despicable woman. When I was asked to help serve tea, and we were alone in the kitchen, my mother-in-law would say such things. I was taken aback by the sudden insults. You look so clumsy. Don't you dare cause any trouble for Tom, okay? My mother-in-law would hurl harsh words at me like that. But when we went to the living room where my husband and father-in-law were, she would suddenly put on a smiling face. Come on, let's all have some tea and snacks. I witnessed this switching between my mother-in-law's two-faced behavior, and it terrified me. I'm sure my husband thinks I get along well with her, 
since getting married. We had been visiting my in-laws' house every month. Um, could you just go alone, Tom? I'll stay home. Even when I gently declined going together, my husband would insist. But Mom is looking forward to seeing you, Rose. Saying that, he would forcefully take me along. Every time, I felt extremely uncomfortable. I couldn't bear the thoughts of having such stressful dates several times a month. So, I decided to discuss it with my husband. Tom, it's about your mother. The truth is, whenever I'm alone with your mother, she always bullies me. Huh? When I honestly opened up to my husband, he was surprised. That's why going to your parents' house every month has been difficult for me. When I said that, my husband laughed. Huh, <laughs> what are you talking about? There's no way my mom would do something like that. She's the sweetest person ever. Besides, she always speaks to you with a smile and kindness. Doesn't she? No. That's only when you and your father are around. <laughs> My mom isn't that clever. She can't switch between different faces. My husband didn't believe a word I said. I wondered how I could make him believe me. After much thought, I came up with an answer. I decided to record our conversations when we were alone. So, the next time I went to my in-law's house, I recorded the conversation with my mother-in-law. And when I came home, I played it for my husband. You truly useless as a wife, aren't you? What kind of parents raised a failure like you? Tom is really pitiful. My husband listened intently to the voice recording from my phone. Do you believe me now? Whenever we're alone, your mother always says horrible things to me like this. There was a brief silence from my husband. I thought he must be shocked to discover his mother's true nature. But to my surprise, my husband made a startling statement. When did you create such a worthless thing? There's no way mom would say such terrible things. You must have fabricated and prepared fake audio with lies, right? What? Why would I need to do something like that? Then are you saying that mom actually said those awful things? I've been saying that from the beginning. Stop messing around. I never thought you could stoop so low. Even if you dislike my mom, making up such lies is unforgivable. Why? Why would I lie about this? Shut up. My husband never believed anything I said. I was thoroughly disillusioned with him. And at that moment, it became clear to me that he was a mama's boy. He would not protect me. I thought back to our first Christmas together, and it was the same. Although not overly, my mother-in-law would badmouth me to the relatives. Rose isn't good at housework. She can't do anything without my guidance every time. She had a smile on her face, but she clearly expressed that I was an incompetent wife. I looked at my husband, hoping for support, but he just laughed along with the relatives without defending me. And even when I had evidence like this, my husband sided with his mother instead of me. I was utterly bewildered. I thought that it might be impossible to go on like this. And finally, I began considering divorce from my husband. However, at that time, my work was incredibly busy, and it would be difficult to deal with a divorce that missed everything. There would be a lot to do, such as moving and relocating. So, quietly, I decided that I would divorce him after my work settled down next year. But during that time, an unexpected event occurred. It happened during Christmas, when, as usual, the entire extended family gathered at my in-law's house. 
I was busy as usual, bustling around since early morning, cleaning, going to buy groceries, and preparing food in the kitchen. Then, just as the banquet was about to begin, my mother-in-law approached me and said something like this: "Hold on, are you serving the same menu as last year, by any chance?" Huh? Oh, well, yes, but. As I answered, my mother-in-law widened her eyes and became angry. Honestly, you always think about taking shortcuts like this. I can't believe you're serving the same dishes as last year. Oh, um, but there is a reason behind this. As I tried to explain, my husband entered the kitchen. What's going on, Tom? Honey, listen. Rose made the same dishes as last year. Can you believe it? What? Are you slacking off, Rose? No, it's not like that. I was just about to explain to your mother. There are circumstances behind this. What circumstances? It's probably some silly reason anyway. Exactly. We don't need a disgraceful wife like her. With my mother-in-law and husband blaming me like that, and to make matters worse, my mother-in-law threw away the food I had prepared into the trash. What are you doing? I can't let the relatives eat the same dishes as last year. Yeah, Mom's right. You really are a terrible wife. Well, we have no choice. Let's get high-end catering. Rose. You'll cover all the expenses. Saying that, my husband made a phone call to a catering service he knew. I had reached my breaking point. All right, I understand. Then I'll leave. Gladly. What? What? My mother-in-law and husband were surprised by my statement. What are you saying? Well, you said you don't need a disgraceful wife, right? So I'm leaving. Wait, how selfish can you be? Excuse me? <laughs> you say that? I've had enough. I can't go on with you anymore. I'm getting a divorce. Hold on a minute. I want to accept that. Whether you accept it or not doesn't matter to me. Continuing our married life is just not possible for me. Saying that. I grabbed my bag and left my in-laws' house. My husband desperately tried to stop me, but I ignored him and went back home. Then I packed my belongings and returned to my parents' house. My parents were surprised to see me, but became exasperated after hearing the situation. After that, I had a meal of my mother's cooking, which I hadn't had in a long time. Indeed, my mother's cooking was delicious. I had learned it before getting married, and used to make it at my in-laws as well. Even though I thought I was doing decently on my own, I couldn't compare to my mother. While contemplating such thoughts, I spent a relaxed year-end with my parents. Afterward, I received repeated phone calls from my husband. Ignoring them didn't stop him, so I reluctantly answered the call. Hello. Help me, Rose. Something terrible happened, huh? I knew it. I had already anticipated that something like this would happen. It's because you threw away my cooking, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. If only you would tell me about that, huh? Before explaining anything, you and your mother were busy blaming me, weren't you? And on top of that, it was you who threw away food, right? Well, that's anyway. Please come with me and explain. No,、oh, what would you want me to explain anyway? That my cooking was thrown away? No, that won't work. Can we say that the seasoning went wrong and the food turned out bad? So my mother had no choice but to throw it away. Kidding me? Absolutely not. 
but I thought you would help me and my mom. I've been through a lot because of both of you. Why should I help you? But, but if things continue like this, we'll be down and in debt. Debt? What do you mean? When I listened the detailed story from my husband, I was shocked. The reason why I made the same dishes as last year was because it was a request from my mother-in-law's sister, Donna. Donna has been suffering from a serious illness for the past few years, and her options for food have become limited. However, she mentioned that she enjoyed all the dishes I made last year and was able to eat them without any issues. That's why she asked me to make the same dishes this year as well. When my mother-in-law threw away the dishes I made for Donna, there were actually relatives present who witnessed the entire incident and the exchange between us. It seems that Donna got wind of the whole series of events. She was furious when she learned the truth and immediately confronted my mother-in-law. She also disclosed something to my father-in-law. I have kept silent until now because my sister pleaded with me, but she had an affair six years ago. The person she had an affair with was also married, and his wife demanded a large sum of compensation from them. I reluctantly stepped in and paid the compensation on her behalf. My sister begged me repeatedly not to tell you or Tom about this and said it was a momentary mistake. I didn't want to ruin your family, so I kept it a secret. However, I couldn't stand my sister's recent behavior towards Rose anymore. It was unforgivable for her to throw away the food Rose made for me, which I appreciated so much. I intend to reveal everything in front of our relatives. Donna reportedly exposed my mother-in-law's wrongdoing to the relatives. My father-in-law was furious, and the relatives left. The expensive Italian catering that my husband had requested ended up being wasted in an instant. My mother-in-law was handed a divorce settlement and ordered to pay compensation, putting her in a difficult situation. That's why they came to me seeking help. However, I no longer love my husband, and I dislike my mother-in-law as well. In the first place, it's her own fault, and it has nothing to do with me. My intention to divorce hasn't changed. I don't mind going to court. I'll have my lawyer contact you. Well, then, I said that and hung up the phone. Afterwards, my husband, fearing the trial agreed to the divorce terms, and I was able to get divorced successfully. As for my ex-mother-in-law, she was kicked out of the house. She moved in with my ex-husband, but both of them are burdened with debt, so their lives are difficult. Meanwhile, I decided to live with my parents for a while. Currently, I can allocate most of my income to savings, and my life is quite comfortable. I am really glad I was able to cut off that bad connection. For now, I plan to increase my assets and eventually aim for semi-retirement. I can learn more cooking from my mother, and making elaborate dishes has become my hobby as well. I'm thinking of taking my parents on a trip abroad next year.